Hey everyone, this is Jordan from LutzLounge.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a moving photo effect uh, in Final Cut, but we're also going to use Photoshop to cut out the uh, in, in individual layers that we need to use this effect. Uh, you could technically do this in Final Cut all on its own, but it just does require a lot of masking uh, and a lot of cutting out. Um, so I prefer to do it in Photoshop starting out so that it's a little bit easier. Uh, but let's go ahead and go into it. So I have this photo here, and what I'm going to do is basically cut out the foreground right here along with the person and use that as one image. And then I'm going to cut out the sky and use that as another image. So I'm going to have two different layers when it comes to this tutorial. You can have more, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to show you two, um, the, the method for all, whether it's two layers or five layers, whatever you want to do, is exactly the same. So the first thing we're going to do is cut out our person here, and a, a, along with that, the cliff, cliff area here. Now there's a lot of ways to do this. You could do it freehand with the, uh, the quick selection tool, just go in here and start selecting kind of like that, and then go around and find the person. Um, you can do it like that, but I'm just going to use uh, some uh, content aware features. I'm going to use uh, select up here and go to select subject. Now it's going to cut out the person as well as a little bit of the cliff, which is totally fine. Um, I'm actually going to go in here and just look and I can see that it didn't select all of the hat. So I'm going to get my quick selection tool over here and I'm going to just scale it down a little bit and then just select some of that hat on its own. And there we go. Most of the other stuff looks very good. I don't have to worry about these individual little pieces here. That's not going to show up. Uh, but now that that's selected, I'm going to take my quick selection tool again and I'm just going to select the rest of the cliff. So now my person along with the cliff is selected and all I'm going to do is click the layer mask button right here and that will take the sky away just like that. Now all I'm going to do right here is basically just save this. I'm going to go to uh, file, save a copy. I'm going to choose save on your computer. If that comes up for you, that's what you need to do there. And I have a folder here on my desktop that I'm going to save this as a PNG right here. Uh, the reason for PNG is obviously to have a transparent background. And I'm just going to call this subject and click save. So now that I got my subject out of the way, I'm actually going to delete this layer mask. Most of, most of the time you would probably uh, just kind of invert the selection, but I found it's just easier, easier just to kind of start over and select the sky. So for this uh, layer mask here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say delete layer mask to get back to our normal photo. Uh, and now what I need to do is cut out the sky. So to do that, what I'm going to do is go again up to my select features, click select and click select sky, and it will detect the sky here. And we're going to go ahead and just create a layer mask right there and you can see it selects the sky. Uh, we do have a couple little problems here. Obviously, the uh, kind of outline of the person is there. So just to clean it up, because we need to make this look like a 100% uh, clean sky, uh, I'm going to do a new layer. I'm going to get a clone stamp tool here, and I'm just going to start kind of sampling some of this stuff. It does not need to be a perfect sky at all. So like the patterns of the clouds don't need to match perfectly, uh, and I'll actually show you why here in just a second. Uh, but I'm just kind of making it a little bit more of a kind of blending in a little bit more of those selected layers, selected areas of the photo right there. Cool. That'll that'll work just fine. Now I'm going to take both of these layers in Photoshop. I'm going to highlight both of them and click Command or Control E on your keyboard. And that will just combine everything together. I'm going to duplicate this by dragging this down here. I'm going to click Command or Control T for transform. And I'm just going to rotate this around right here. Do this, kind of match it up a little bit and scale it up, and just like that. So now we have a perfect sky here that kind of blends in a little bit more. Um, I'm going to highlight these layers again, combine them, uh, and I might play around with the orientation of the sky. If I like that one dark cloud being a little bit more towards the top, I'll just do it right there. And boom, we have another sky. We have our, our sky there. Uh, obviously, you can choose a different sky for maybe like a, a stock library or something like that. But I'm just going to keep this sky the way it is. And now we're done with the sky image. We're going to go to File, Save a Copy. Uh, save on our computer as well. Uh, go to our folder, and then we're going to call this one Sky. And because this one doesn't need to be a PNG, I'm just going to save it as a JPEG. So we'll go ahead and click Save there. We'll do a max file size. 
and there we go. Okay, so now we're gonna hop over into Final Cut, and this is where we put everything together. One thing before we get started is I'm actually doing this in a vertical video format because typically this kind of effect you kind of see on like Instagram or TikTok or something like that. So I'm making it more of a vertical format. Uh, you can do a regular horizontal 16 by 9 ratio video format, but for this one, it was a vertical photo starting out. So I'm just going to keep it in the vertical format to make it more useful on social media. So we have our vertical video here. Um, and now what we're going to do is just take our two photos that we have. We have our subject and our sky. I'm going to take my sky here and I'm going to drag it down uh, to right around there. And I'm going to, to take it out to about six seconds roughly. So we have a six second clip here. I'm going to click on that layer and I'm going to go ahead and transform it and make it fill up that whole video format. Uh, I'm going to go to fit here or actually go to 12. 12 and a half ratio percentage here. There we go. All right. And now I'm going to take my uh, subject here and drag him on top. And you can see it doesn't fill up the whole screen here. We got a little bit at the bottom. So again, we have to transform this, scale this up a little bit. And what actually we'll do is I think I want this image to zoom out. I want the subject to zoom out. So what I need to do starting at the beginning of the clip is I need to make this guy zoomed in like this and put him right there. So he's zoomed in a little bit and as this effect happens, it's going to zoom that particular layer out. So I need as much room to play with as possible here. Click done. So now let's start with the moving portion. We're gonna use keyframing to use uh, our, our moving. Um, if you uh, use the Ken Burns effect, you technically could, uh, but if you want to use keyframing, uh, you have a little bit more control and you can kind of guide it a little bit more in the direction that you want to go. You can actually not just zoom in or out. You can go a little bit more to the left, a little more to the right, uh, take the speed as much as you want to. You can have a whole lot of things going on with keyframing. And that's what we're going to do here. So take our sky here and we're going to zoom our sky. Uh, we're probably going to zoom our sky in, I think. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. So we're going to start the beginning of our clip and we're going to go over here and click on scale all. We have this little keyframe button right over here. Add a keyframe. And now we're gonna take our clip and zoom it all the way to the end of our clip. And now we're gonna scale this clip up. So actually we're gonna zoom the sky. We're gonna zoom the sky in too, but we're gonna do a little bit slower. So roughly here, we're gonna zoom it in. Uh, let's just make it an even 300% right there. So now as you can see, our sky moves as the clip goes on. It doesn't move very fast. It is moving fast now because I'm, I'm scrubbing it right here, but it, it will move. Now we need to click on our subject and we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna zoom out on this one. So we're gonna go here and have our subject selected. We're gonna click a keyframe button here. We're gonna drag this all the way to the end. And now we're gonna zoom this guy out. So like that, and just before we get rid of a lot of that part at the bottom, we may actually take it down a little bit more just before there, right there. All right, so now we have our effect. You can see, just doing the scrubbing here, you can see the type of effect it gives. And that is basically it. After you've done that, you can add some color grading to it, uh, which I would recommend using an adjustment layer. Uh, if you want to know uh, about just adjustment layers, click uh, the link in the description down below. I have a video on adjustment layers. Very, very helpful. And now you have your effect. So when you post it on social media, it'll look something like this. Alright guys, that was the quick and easy moving photo effect. It's a very, very simple effect, especially when you only have two things to play with, a subject and a sky. Uh, very, very simple, but a very cool effect for social media. Definitely takes a plain photo and turns it into something a little bit more jazzed up. So thank you guys for joining me in this video. Head on over to LutzLounge.com. Uh, more tutorials over there, uh, LUTs that you can purchase and check out, uh, a few Lightroom presets you can check out as well, uh, merch store, everything's over there. It's gonna, it's a great little place to just uh, kind of dive into and see what you can find. So thank you guys for joining me in this video and I'll see you in the next one.